Hey everybody, uh, thank you for joining me for my first video. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up an aquarium uh, from scratch, from nothing. And if you're a beginner, this will be really helpful to you. And if you already keep fish and you already know how to do it, uh, this will just reinforce a lot of tips. Maybe you'll learn something, maybe you won't. But uh, hopefully it'll be useful to everyone. Okay, so step one is picking out the tank. And a lot of people will tell you that tank size doesn't matter or what tank you pick out doesn't really matter, but it really does and just because of a couple reasons. Reason number one being, um, how much time do you have to take care of this tank? Obviously a water change on a 75 gallon will take you a lot longer than a water change on a 10 gallon. So just keep that in mind. Number two is pretty obvious what you're gonna be keeping. So if you're gonna be keeping fish that get too big for the tank, you need to make sure that you're providing adequate space for your fish for a million reasons. Because if you don't give them enough space, they die early, get disease, all kinds of bad things happen. So you really wanna make sure that you're just accommodating for how big your species will be. And remember that at the pet store, all the fish you're seeing are actually babies. So everything is gonna just get bigger from there. So keep that in mind too. And lastly, this is a topic that's really overlooked, but fish don't really care about how many gallons your tank is or how big your tank is. They care more about how much floor space do they have, how much room do they have to swim, how many square inches is your tank. So don't always worry about how many gallons it is and look at more how much floor space does the tank give. So once you picked out a tank that fits you, uh, I picked out the UNS 60S Ultim Nature System and I picked this tank out for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one being it's rimless, which I really like. Number two is the glass is low iron, so it is extremely clear. And number three being the shape. That's the main reason I picked it out because I'm planning to do a pond tank with it. And so that's why I picked out this tank. And as you can see, it also has a lot of floor space, so that's a pretty good plug. Okay, uh, so that ends today's video of how to pick out a tank. In the next video, we'll talk about how to escape a tank, so just stay tuned for that, and it'll be fun. Hey guys, thank you for joining me for episode 2 of the setup series. Uh, we're going to be talking about escaping the tank today, and it's going to be really cool, so uh, stay tuned. Okay guys, so now it's time to get to the exciting part, which is escaping the tank. Uh, first, we're gonna talk about and pick out substrate. That could be gravel, it could be sand. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys a couple tips on saving some money for this stuff and where you can find it. So in uh, most of my tanks, I actually use pool filtration sand. And I know a lot of scapers, pro scapers, don't really like pool filtration sand just because they feel like it loses its color over time or that uh, it doesn't look quite so natural, but uh, I think it does a quite really good job. And I get 50 pounds of it for $11. And when you're on a budget, that's pretty good. I actually had to do a voiceover for this part just because the water running was so loud. But basically what I'm doing is I'm just rinsing the water, dumping it, and then doing it over and over again until the water runs clear. So just keep doing it until your water is clear. Okay guys, so uh, after you cleaned your sand, we're just going to add it to the tank and take a scooper, you know, on my slippers. And uh, I'll just add a little layer of this in. Uh, you don't want to go too thick with sand because it can compact and get kind of gross, uh, lower your water quality. Okay, now I've got all my sand in there. I'm just going to smooth it out nice and even with my hands. So I didn't really put sand in this back left corner, and you guys will find out later in this series when we talk about hardscaping. In this video, we're just going to be talking about hardscape, and a uh, hardscape is just anything hard that you choose to put in your tank, just like these rocks here, some driftwood like that, and uh, yeah, it should be pretty cool. I hope you enjoy. So here are the pieces. Uh, ignore that it's on a pan, <laughs> but... I actually boiled these for 30 seconds and with lava rock you have to be really careful with boiling because it actually can disintegrate if you boil it for too long. Uh, most rocks you can boil for 30 seconds I would advise but with lava rock you just need to be extra careful. Uh, boiling works really well it kills anything that is deadly or deadly to your fish on it so uh, yeah I like to boil them for just for 30 seconds just to make sure 
Okay, so we're gonna start adding the rocks. Um, escaping, it can take you a long time. Um, I do suggest uh, setting them up, looking at them for a little bit, thinking how you like it and stuff. Just take your time with this part and, uh, yeah. The next kind of hardscape I'm gonna add is driftwood, and I do suggest boiling driftwood for quite a while, so like maybe five minutes, before adding it to the tank, and that is to kill any parasites in it. Uh, I personally don't do it to remove the tannins, I know that's why a lot of other people do it, is just to remove the tannins, and tannins are what leaks out of the wood after you add it to the tank, it kind of turns your water kind of tinted brown, uh, I personally don't mind it, I think it looks very natural and good, but uh, I just solely boil it for the purpose of keeping my fish safe and um, making sure these don't carry any disease into my tank. Okay, I set my driftwood in here, and I really like the placement. Uh, I know there's a lot of rules that you can follow when you do this kind of stuff, but um, I personally kind of just like to wing it, uh, try to make it look natural, and yeah, that's my goal. Okay guys, so now we're going to start on a filler for this back corner here, and I'm going to use lava rock, barbecue lava rock, it's really cheap, and it's a good filler because you don't want to just use substrate for the corner, or it can compact and get really gross, uh, lower that water quality once again, and it can just really damage your tank. So we want to use something that's a bit bigger, and so we're going to use barbecue lava rock as just a filler for this entire back corner to really create some depth, and you can always use this underneath your gravel or anything like that just to create some more depth. Alright guys, thank you for watching that, and uh, stay tuned for next episode where you find out what we put on top of that lava rock, and I think you guys are going to really like it. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be playing the pond tank. To plant this pond tank, I'm going to be using Lucky Bamboo. I just haven't seen a lot of people using Lucky Bamboo before, and I just want to use this as an example that it's actually really good looking, and it's pretty easy to grow. So no more talking, and enjoy this time lapse of me planting Lucky Bamboo into the pond tank. Alright guys, so I just filled up the pond tank just to keep the roots in some water so they don't die. Uh, it obviously looks like a really big mess right now. A lot of the wood floated, obviously, because it has to be uh, submerged and it has to soak. But I still think it all turned out really well. Uh, I know I'm probably going to have to order a little bit more. I'll plant that in there. And then you guys will get lots of updates on this tank, including the use of this Awaze canister filter. I really like it and I think it's going to do really well in this tank. Hey what's going on guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to be breaking down my CO2 setup. So the first thing I want to break down in this setup is the regulator. This is a paintball regulator made by F-Zone and I really like it. Here I have the bubble counter that comes with it which is really nice and this all seems really high quality all together. And it screws really easy on as you can see right here in this video clip. And I screwed it onto my paintball canister and it all went all together really easy and then it has a solenoid that I plugged in into the piece right there as you can see and then it plugs into a second piece right here just like that. Secondly I got this paintball canister from Dick Sporting Goods. It was like $25 and I can get refills pretty cheap and it's 20 ounces so it's altogether a pretty good deal. I also ordered this stainless steel diffuser kit that came with a U-bend and some suction cups for the tubing. I really like this kind of kit because you can unscrew and clean the diffuser thoroughly. It also came with two replacement discs which is really nice too. Since this is my first time injecting CO2, I decided to pick up one of these CO2 checkers to check how my CO2 levels were doing since it is my first time and I do not have a lot of experience in this. So it came with this glass checker you see here and the liquid to fill it up as well as the indicator card to tell you what levels are safe and what are not. I also picked up the CO2 proof tubing off of Amazon for only $10. 
Attach it to the regulator, I first heat it up under some hot water to make it more flexible. I unscrewed the nut off of the bubble counter, put it over the tubing, and I attached it to the bubble counter and screwed down the nut. You want to make sure that you screw down the nut super tight so that you don't have any leaks. I then also attached the tubing onto the U-Bend and the diffuser. And that wraps up my CO2 setup. Drop a like if you liked the video and please let me know what you think about it. Can I ask you about love? Why they called me a son? But you never looked at a woman and been totally wrong. Oh my God, what an angel on earth just for you. Could rescue you from the depths of hell. And you wouldn't know what it's like to be her angel. Hey what's going on guys welcome back to another video it's Deli Aquatics here just bringing you an update on the pond tank. Alright guys so the biggest update to this tank is that we got it a new light it is the Kessel A80 Tuna Sun it's just a lot better than the old clip lamp that I had on there with just a generic bulb in it. Alright guys so a couple aspects of this light that I really like is that it has a small focal point with a big color spectrum all packed in there and what this does is it makes the light have a really good shimmer. Uh, I know a lot of people will tell you that uh, shimmer is not that important and shimmer should be last on the priority list but for me shimmer is actually a really big deal because I feel like it really changes the entire tank and makes it look really nice. Here is a video of the tank before I added the new light. As you can see, uh, it's just a lot more flat. Uh, the tank still looks good, but just not nearly as clear and as much detail as the other light. Some of you guys might have noticed that I added this giant chunk of Busa philandra. Uh, I got it from Boost Plants and I plan to tie it to the wood, so I'm just temporarily housing it right here. The only livestock I have in this tank is this German ram right here. Uh, I do plan to add some tetras in the future. Uh, this lucky bamboo is doing really good. Uh, it's growing really fast ever since I added the new light and I dosed some Seachem Flourish in this tank. The filtration is an Awaze Biomaster Thermo 250. Uh, it definitely is over filtering the tank, but I really like it because it keeps the tank nice and clean. The glass lily pipes are from eBay. Uh, I got the swirl one because I knew the filter would be extremely powerful and I had to diverge the flow. Here is that uh, piece of Busa Philandra I was talking about. And I've also been playing around with the Anubias that I have in this tank. Uh, some people don't like it. I kind of like it. Uh, I've just been playing around, putting it in different spots, and just seeing how it looks. Overall, this definitely is a low-tech setup. Uh, maintenance is very easy. Uh, I don't dose like a bunch of fertilizers or anything. Just see chem flourish, uh, the recommended amount, basically. And overall, it does really well. Alright guys, this is the end of the video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you do, please leave a like and uh, follow Daily Aquatics on Instagram.
What's going on guys? If you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm escaping the new Circlo tank. If you guys don't know what happened to the old one, check the past video and I'll explain how my tank leaked at 12.30 at night. Guys, to escape this tank, I just used some pool filtration sand. I just laid in a thin layer of it. And the rock I'm using is Serio Stone. I ordered about 90 pounds of it all together, so it's pretty full. Uh, we have a lot of it in these two buckets right here. I'm trying to escape it from a cyclic tank, so I'm trying to make as many heaves as I can. As you guys know, in the past I had one mound here and then another here. But I think I just want to do one centerpiece that can be viewed from the left and the right side, not just head on. So uh, yeah, I'm just trying to make as many caves as I can for them and make it also as tall as I can because this is a tall tank, so I want to fill all this area up. I got my Serious Stone from Chili. That's because they have probably the best deal on Serious Stone. I would suggest buying it from them because they're pretty good. It's a lot cheaper than an aquascaping store. And the pool filtration sand <coughs> is from Lowe's. No, it's from Ace Hardware. You can get it almost anywhere. So you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's. Those are good places too. I just get this because you can also use play sand, but uh, that's also like really cloudy. So that takes a long time to uh, clean. So I'd rather not do that. So I just get pool filtration sand. I rinsed it a couple times. That didn't stay. And uh, yeah, so uh, right now I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to base the first layer of rocks. All the holes with these little rocks. These are great because if you don't have little rocks in your big rock scape, it's not going to look nearly as good. It's really about the details when it comes to aquascaping them as any tank. So just remember that. Make sure you have little details, little rocks, little pebbles, just to fill in all those gaps. I think I'm really starting to like this because this rock really sits up here well and stable. So you can see nothing shifting. And uh, yeah, it's pretty nice. I'm gonna get a medium sized rock, stick it somehow, try to get it to stick up in here. So maybe we can get it. Maybe like that. Oh, don't get me. Let me grab this one back here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna place these little, there's also some foreground rocks that we're definitely gonna need. These make all the difference. They just make your tank look not so flat. They look really flat without these. Like this would just look like a wall, but when it's done, you're gonna see how much depth there is just because of these small little details. So don't forget to have that. It doesn't have to be up to the edge of the tank since you do stand taller. So it's not, you don't really have to fill it all the way up to the very top like this much, but still try to get it as tall as you can because it's still a really tall tank. So yeah, I'm just, just feel it. This thing is coming out a lot better. So before, as you guys know, I had like that round semicircle. Kind of ditched that. I made it a little bit more compact, but that allowed me to make these more caves and like put some rocks in the back, which is sad because you don't get to see all of them, but it's gonna be better in the long run because it's gonna look way more, have way more depth and just look like so many more shadows. So even though it is a waste of some rock, it's for the benefit because it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna look more KV. Oh yeah. It's looking real good. And like look how much. Look how much we have only to the top of the tank. Like about like it's probably like six inches maybe. So we're still getting pretty high. Alright guys so uh we're putting rocks off the off of the main mound. So you wanna like make sure you're putting some rocks that are coming off of it to make it look like it like almost grew out of the ground. Even though rocks don't grow. We're making grow today. Oh, yeah. Take like these these little parts that like fell off, and I just drop them in there, and no one really notices, but I know, and that's what matters. 
All right, so, uh, oh, this is a good one to stand up. Maybe like coming off the back. I'm, so what we're trying to do is like thin this out a little bit and get it to just come out a little thinner because it is really thick. And yeah, let me put this one like out here. A lot of times like these little rocks, like the cichlids are gonna move them around because they dig in the sand. But make it look good while you can. It won't last forever. This looks really good. Like it looks, it looks a lot bigger than the old one did, you know? So I'm liking it. We just have a lot of little rocks left in these buckets right here. Let's see, we have just a lot of them. So a lot of detail. Because remember what matters. Yeah, that's good. It gives us freeze up this big hunker. And we can put this one. You also don't want to fill in all the cages with little rocks because then they won't have anywhere to go. So we can leave some, some caves open. I'll figure out something to do with this later. Oh, this is really fun. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. We just got the fish in the tank. And remember, I mean, see y'all later. And remember, <laughs> suck on the end of that siphon tubing. Uh. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to be doing an update on the cichlid tank. All right guys, so as you can see, I've definitely updated this cave from last time. Uh, basically what happened was, is I needed to borrow some serious stone from my other tank, so that's what I did. I took some of the best pieces I put in that tank and then just rebuilt this new structure. Uh, this time guys, I tried to go for some bigger caves because I know the fish are definitely getting bigger and they would just need some more carriers. There's one right there. Um, but yeah, I think I actually like this cave a little better. It takes up more of the tank, but it's not as tall. And then, as you can see, I also added some Anubias, and I think it actually looks pretty good. At first, I didn't like it. I thought it made it look like kind of cheesy. I don't know, but I really like it. And the craziest part of all is we are starting to get some breeding. Uh, that fish right there, the black one, blackish blue, he or uh, she was carrying some eggs in her mouth recently, and then I've seen some fry. All together, this tank is doing uh, really good. I've just been performing the regular 50% water changes. Actually more like 75% water changes once a week on it. Uh, I do go around and scrub the algae off, especially off the leaves too. And then I probably just change the filter. Uh, I wrap like some polyester filling around the filter. So uh, I probably change that like once every three weeks. Uh, yeah, that filter does pretty good for its price and I really like it. So all together guys, the tank is doing really good. And uh, just let me know if you guys like these short little update videos. Um, I'm going to try to do them more often. Uh, just let me know down in the comments if you like them. And if you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. With all that said, guys, uh, thanks for watching.